In this video and in the one that follows it, BioStrings 1 and BioStrings 2, we're going to spend a little bit of time exploring the bioconductor package BioStrings for the analysis and exploration of DNA sequence data. In this video, we're going to practice reading in FASTA DNA sequence files into the DNA string set object. We'll take a look at how that object is structured. And then we will explore a couple of the BioStrings functions for traversing and searching through DNA strings. Uh, and then we will calculate and visualize the nucleotide content of a single genome sequence from E. coli. All right, to get started, we're going to need a couple of libraries, the one that we're targeting, BioStrings. And then we're also going to use the ggplot2 library for a couple of data visualizations. OK, uh, to get our data, I'm going to paste in a command here. We're going to use download file and point that at the NCBI FTP server to grab a reference genome for E. coli. That's the whole path there. I'm going to include the code with this video, so you can uh, you don't have to copy all that down right here. And we're gonna uh, we're gonna save that as a file called genome.fna.gz, and it should download fairly quickly. It's about a megabyte, so on slower connections, it may take a few seconds, but not very long. Uh, we're then able to read this genome file into R using the function read DNA string set and we'll give it the only argument is the name of the file a pretty cool thing about read dna string set is that it's able to read directly from these gzipped compressed files so we don't have to unzip this that's going to save a little bit of storage capacity and uh, it's just cool you can make sure everything read right with print genome that's pretty good. It says DNA string set object of length one. There's just a single chromosome sequence in this reference genome for E. coli, one circular chromosome, uh, of length 4,641,652 nucleotides. And then it shows us in the seq attribute here, uh, first and last uh, parts of the sequence here, uh, with you know 4,600,000 nucleotides in between. All right, we can get it just that uh, just the sequence part of this uh, using the uh, index notation with two brackets in R. So each one of these uh, in index values, if there were more than one chromosome, uh, we could use uh, index one, two, three, four. But in this case, we just have just one. So if we look at that, it says uh, this is a 4.6 million, 4 million letter DNA string object. And now it gives us uh, just the sequence attribute here, not the width or names. Part of that. Uh, all right, so just to get us started, let's just try a couple of uh, uh, subsetting methods here. So we do genome one, and uh, it's going to work just like a, a regular vector. So we could do uh, the bracket notation for a vector, and we could do something like one colon 10 to do elements one through 10. And that's going to print just right those first 10 nucleotides from here. Let's do another one. Uh, it doesn't matter where along the sequence we do. So we could do 4,600,000 to 4,600,000 and 100. And that's going to print 100 nucleotides, uh, 4,600,000 nucleotides in. Uh, so this is really powerful. The DNA string set object stores the DNA uh, in uh, an indexed format in memory. Uh, so that may not be uh, the most efficient way to store very, very large sets of DNA sequence data, but it's very efficient if you do have the, uh, the memory to read these objects. It's very efficient at data access. So let's go and look at a couple of functions. All right, the first one is uh, called alphabet frequency, and this is going to calculate the, the frequency of nucleotides in the sequence. So let's try this out. Alphabet frequency uh, of the genome object. And let's just run that. Okay. 
So uh, 1.14 million A's, 1.18 million C's, uh, none of the alternate codings MRW uh, or insertions or deletions. So this is just a straight ACGT FASTA file. Uh, we, you know, we might be interested in something like um, calculating the frequency of C's and G's in the genome, the GC composition, and we could do that in a fairly straightforward way here using alphabet frequency once again. So alphabet frequency genome. Uh, this time we want to do as prob equals T to give us the proportion or probability of each nucleotide. I'm going to put that into an object. I'm going to call it Geno Freak. And we could just bar plot Geno Freak just to check this. Bar plot Geno Freak. There we go. Uh, oh, yeah, let's see. Let's do bar plot Geno Freak uh, bracket one, four. So we just do the first four columns. Aha, there we go. That's better. So now we can see, uh, you know, there's slightly more, when we visualize it, there's slightly more C's and G's than there are T's, but it's we could also get it that those calculations we can access we can access each of the uh, the frequencies using this index notation. So GC would be two plus four, and uh, it's about point five. No, two three, not two four. Sorry, two three. There we go. It's uh, 50.7%, almost 51% GC in this E. coli genome. Uh, so if you're familiar with GC content, that can be variable between genomes. And that might be something that you want to check uh, on your own data. All right. Uh, let's do a little bit of searching for particular DNA words, particular KMERS. Uh, in this case, we're going to look for trimer trimeric sequences, three letters in a row. Uh, and for that, we're going to use the function uh, count pattern and match pattern. They work the same. Count pattern is just going to return the total number of matches, and matches is going to tell you where in the sequence that pattern was found. So let's search for a pattern that is... Uh, what we would expect in the DNA sequence matching a start codon. This is in the non-coding strand. Uh, and then the reverse complement of that. All right. And we can do count pattern, pattern one. Uh, and we're searching in genome bracket bracket one. So just the string object. And we get uh, 76,282 matches to the forward read on that. Uh, let's run that. Uh, 52,611 uh, for the reverse. The second function is match pattern. Match pattern. Uh, this is going to return the data in a slightly different format, but we call it the exact same way. So match pattern, P1 genome. Uh, and that's going to give us a table with the start and end of each match. Uh, the width is always going to be the same here. Uh, we can give it a number of mismatches allowed here as well, and then the width might be different uh, if we get a parcel, partial match. And it gives us all 76,000 matches here, uh, where they start, where they end, and what the match is. So let's call this M1, and we'll do the same thing for matches two with our second string. Uh, and now I'd like to visualize this along the genome. Uh, so I'm going to need to convert these to a data frame uh, and plot these with ggplot. Right, so our problem there, uh, M1, uh, let's see, M1, we need to get the attribute of the ranges. So we're going to do at ranges and M2 at ranges. Yeah, so that's what I get for not visualizing match DF1 and 2. Let's do that. Let's do head. There we go. Now it looks like a data frame with start, end, and width. And now our plotting ought to work. Aha, there we go. Uh, all right, let's add the second series and then we'll customize it. So same setup, just a different data frame input. That looks good. Now we have both series. Uh, let's do theme minimal. Let's add some colors here. That's better. 
Uh, I don't like the smoothing on these uh, these Gaussian density functions. I'm going to give it a different kernel. Use the rectangular kernel, and uh, I'm going to have it interpolate at n equals uh, 4,600 points. So there's about one every what's that? One every thousand base pairs here. Now we can start to see something. All right, so we see uh, you know these patterns are matching at uh, different relative frequencies across the genome. Uh, and depending on what it is you're searching for, these patterns might be meaningful to you uh, with uh, three letter start codons. It's not particularly meaningful, but it is fun to look for anyways. All right, that's a wrap for the first video. In the second video, come back and we will look at uh, other methods for searching through DNA strings in BioStrings, uh, including sliding window search.